Hi friends, I am back with a new tutorial today where I am going to teach you about restriction enzymes and restriction mapping. Since we have already learned DNA structure and sequencing, learning restriction digestion will be our third step and will help us to learn about recombinant DNA technique and cloning which I will cover soon. Before we begin, let's have a look at the answers for the sequencing problems given in last week's video. Hopefully you solve them, then let's match the answers. From the problem number one, let's first arrange PCR products in ascending order. Remember, usually we do not include primer size in PCR products. So we start reading these PCR products from bottom to the top, going across all the four lanes, which gives us the PCR sequence. Then we make a complementary sequence to it, which is a template sequence, but it is still 3 prime to 5 prime. So we have to reverse it to get the actual template sequence. For problem number two, from the given gel picture, if we deduce the PCR product sequence starting from the bottom, which will be the 5 prime end, then it will be reading like this as given here. Hopefully your answers are matching. Okay, so we get this new problem here on restriction mapping. Now have a look at this data based on restriction enzyme digestions of a DNA fragment and also known as restriction mapping. Can't follow? No problem. Let's first learn about restriction enzymes and how they work, then solve it. Restriction enzymes or restriction endonucleases are bacterial enzymes used for destroying any foreign DNA entering into bacteria, especially any viral DNA. They were accidentally discovered and isolated by Hamilton uh, Smith in 1970 from a bacteria called Haemophilus influenzae. He observed that the DNA from a bacteriophage was being destroyed by the bacteria. Upon further investigations, he discovered these enzymes. Bacteria use these enzymes to cut foreign DNA at a location with a specific nucleotide sequence, which we call as recognition sequence or restriction site. Can these enzymes cut the bacterial DNA itself? Yes, they can as they just recognize a specific DNA sequence irrespective of the source of DNA. Then how bacteria protects itself from this attack? Bacteria have a special system called restriction modification or RM system whereby it codes for restriction enzymes as well as DNA modifying methyltransferases or methylase enzymes. These methylases add a protective methyl group to DNA bases within the recognition sequence so that the recognition enzymes cannot recognize the bacterial DNA and spare it. Since these enzymes restrict the entry of invaders into the bacteria, hence the name restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes can be of type 1 or type 2. Type 1 do not cut or cleave DNA at a specific site, whereas type 2 cleave DNA within a specific DNA sequence. Therefore, in research, medical and industrial uses, type 2 restriction enzymes are used as invaluable DNA cutting tools. You must have heard restriction enzymes names as ECOR1, BGL2, etc. Let's see how restriction enzymes get their names. Restriction enzymes are named by using the first letter of the bacterial genus from where they have been isolated, next two letters from the species name, and fourth letter from the strain name and a Roman number for the number of enzymes isolated from that particular bacteria. For example, here E from Escherichia, CO from coli, R from strain RY13 and Roman number 1 because this was the first enzyme to be isolated from E. coli. Similarly, HIND3 was isolated from Haemophilus influenzae strain RD and was the third enzyme to be isolated. There are more than 4,000 restriction enzymes known to us thus far. These enzymes recognize a 
unique sequence of double stranded DNA also known as recognition site or restriction site and cut the phosphodiester bonds on both DNA strands thus generating a 3 prime OH and 5 prime O terminals. These restriction sites are usually 4 to 6 base pair long palindromes. What is a palindrome? Palindromes read the same in 5 prime to 3 prime directions on both the strands as shown here in this example nurses run where if you read from left to right or right to left it reads the same. Let's see recognition sites of some of the common enzymes like ECOR1, HINDI3, BAMH1. You can notice palindromes here. When restriction enzymes cut both the DNA strands at a particular base, they create sticky or blood ends. For example, for ECOR1 site in a DNA fragment, the cut is between G and A bases at both strands, always starting from 5 prime to 3 prime end and generates two DNA fragments with small single stranded DNA overhangs. These ends are called sticky or cohesive ends. If these ends come in contact with another single stranded complementary DNA, they can remake hydrogen bonds and con can convert into double stranded DNA again. This property is used in recombinant DNA technique which we will learn later. Here we see some more recognition sequences producing sticky ends or even blunt ends where both DNA strands are cut at the same location. Here are the names and recognition sites of a few common restriction enzymes showing the generation of blunt or sticky ends. Since type 2 restriction enzymes cut within their recognition sequence, we can calculate the sizes of the fragments produced therefore, which can be used to create a physical map of a genome or a plasmid or a DNA fragment. They can also be used for cutting DNA at specific locations and then recombining them with another DNA from a different source, thus creating a recombinant DNA molecule. We will learn about this technique as I said in an upcoming uh, tutorial. Let's focus here on creating physical maps or restriction maps of the DNA after restriction digestion. Restriction map is a map showing the positions where a restriction enzyme can cut the DNA. We can obtain such maps by multiple ways but most common method is through double digestion. Let's learn restriction mapping with a simple example. Here is a 600 base pair DNA linear fragment which can be represented by a, a line like this. Then we choose two restriction enzymes, let's say PST1 and NDE1. When we cut this DNA with any one of the restriction enzymes, say PST1, we receive three pieces of DNA known as restriction fragments. And when we cut the same DNA fragment with NDE1, we get only two fragments. Since each enzyme cuts at a specific sequence, the number and sizes produced by each enzyme will be unique. Here PST1 produces three fragments of 170, 195 and 235 base pair sizes and NDE1 produces two fragments of 267 and 333 base pair sizes. If we cut the DNA fragment using both the enzymes together in a double digest as we call it, we get 4 fragments of 97 bases, 138 bases, 170 base pair and 195 base pair. Now we have the data to generate a restriction map. Let's place these on a linear map for individual enzymes first and then combine for double digest. Always remember that the total size of all the digested fragment should be equal to the size of the original DNA fragment. So here we generate the possibilities of restriction sites for PST1. Since it produces three fragments, we should have two restriction sites for this enzyme. But it is difficult to determine their locations using single enzyme digestion data only. Similarly, for NDE1, we expect only one restriction site and two possibilities therefore. 
Now we look at double digest fragments to realize that fragment 138 base pair and 97 base pair long add up to 235 base pair, which is also the size of one of the PST1 digestion fragment. This means NDE1 site is within the 235 base pair fragment and when we perform a double digest, NDE1 cuts within this fragment uh, and makes two new fragments of 97 and 138 base pairs. Now we need to arrange these restriction sites to create a map. So we place the two PST1 sites and one NDE1 site in this order. It is still not possible to figure out whether the 170 uh, base pair or 195 base pair fragment will be produced from the 5 prime end or 3 prime end. What matters is the correct placement of restriction size and the total should be satisfying all the given fragment sizes. This was simple but actually when we perform restriction digestion in the lab and run it on an agarose gel, we obtain the sizes of the different bands. Then these fragments uh, sizes have to be arranged on a linear map so that the single digestion fragment correspond with double digestion fragment. Let's now try to solve the problem we saw in the beginning. The gel here shows different fragments in three lanes, BAMH1 only, PST1 only and double digestion with both enzymes. Or we can also show data in a table like this. Now let's plot first map with BAMH1 as it has the least number of fragments and there should be only one site for BAMH1. We can place them in two possibilities as you can see here. Similarly, a map for PSD1 for which we should have two restriction sites and therefore many more possibilities like uh, as we can see here in different combinations. Now for double digestion with BAMH1 and PST1, first place BAMH1 in any one direction as it's easier to place this with just one cut. Now we try to place PST1 such that not only we place the cuts on desired locations but also obtain the double digestion fragment sizes. If we carefully examine then the total of 575 and 332 in digestion is 907 base pair. Hence, we place a PST1 site there. Similarly, place another PST1 site on the other side of the BAMH1. We have to try a few combinations to acquire a correct restriction map. Next, we observe that if we subtract 332 base pair from 1052 base pair, we get 720 base pair. Hence, this should be the next possibility where uh, around the BAMH1 site we have 332 and 720 fragments. Okay, now try one more problem and let me know your answers in the comment section or check for it in the beginning of my next video where we will be learning about restriction mapping of a circular DNA and about plasmids restriction maps which is crucial for cloning. This table has data obtained from restriction digestion of an 18 kilo base DNA fragment construct with three enzymes individually and in double digestion combinations. Construct a restriction map of the 18 kilo base DNA fragment. Hopefully you learnt about restriction enzymes and restriction mapping. If you have any questions or not suggestions, please let me know in comment section. If you have liked the video, please subscribe and like to let me keep making more and more useful tutorials. So we will meet next week to learn restriction mapping of circular DNA fragments